everybody. What's up? OCD Mikey, Hi-Fi Guy here for another episode of The Mikey Show. And um, today I want to talk to you a little bit about my view. Imagine that. My opinion on something. My view of um, Wilson speakers, Focal, and uh, Magico. Okay, I know those are brands that, ooh, people get so testy about. And people know that I'm, I'm not a fan of, of, of really any of those three. Um, and it's just because at this point, um, it's not been my type of sound. Okay. Now, does that mean that they're bad sounding? No, not at all. <laughs> Unless Focal, <laughs> the jury's still out for me on Focal. But Magico and uh, Wilson, and especially Wilson, I've had a chance to spend some time this past weekend listening to Wilson and Griffin. You can hear it immediately. Like, these things are, are, are dialed. Um, and, and then they have DCS, okay? Um, and, and DCS and MSB, I can basically put them in a camp with, with Wilson and Magico. And then as far as amplifiers, I could put Diagostino. Um, I could put... Um, Boulder, uh, Vetus, Vetus Audio, um, you know, um, and, 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 and these are all part of what I would call dealer sound, okay, or hi-fi sound, um, which basically means analytical sound, okay, so when I tell you that I'm, I'm not into Wilson or I'm not into Magico, it's only because they don't present the sonic attributes that I personally like. Okay, it does not mean they're bad, that I think they're shit or, or anything. Quite the contrary, as a matter of fact. In fact, when I see Wilson speakers, first of all, they're, they're the most, um, I'm probably most impressed by the build of a Wilson. Um, when you come up close to it and you look at how the thing is made, you see where the money goes. Some of these brands, and I won't mention which ones because people will get all butthurt if they carry it, um, but certain brands, they're like 250 grand for a pair of speakers, and you look at them and you're like, these things look like PA speakers. Like, I don't see, and, and it's a single box, you know, it's a single box, and, uh, and that box, you're just like, and it's got some holes cut out around the driver's four holes around the center driver. Um, and you just look at it and you're like, dude, I don't see anything in this build that looks 250 grand. Whereas you go up to a Wilson that's 250 grand and you're like, oh my God. Like the ones I saw the other day at Jay's place, the Chronosonics, oh my God. I've never seen such an impressive looking speaker build. I mean, every, the little dials, they have freaking lights on them, battery powered lights. That, so when you go behind the speaker, you flick on the light and it, and it illuminates the back of the speaker so you can change your resistors or do whatever because they have a resistor array on back to actually pad every single driver so you can adjust gain output on every driver to perfectly dial it in for your room. Um, so um, a Wilson, especially a Wilson, it is absolutely stupendously tweakable for the listening position. Um, in fact, I, I feel that they cross the line. It's too tweakable because it's so dialed in for one listener in one position that you sit anywhere else, you're not getting the experience. Um, you have somebody who's taller. You're not, it's not dialed in. If, if they set it up for your ears and my height, Somebody taller is not going to get the same, like it might be close, but it's not perfect because those things are so incrementally just dialed for one person. Um, but you do see where the money goes. I looked at those, they're the most visually um, um, magnificent speakers, uh, the build. It looks very complex. It looks very tweaky. You look at the back, there's clear plexi covers with resistors and um, and these, oh, it, it's aluminum just cut and, and it's amazing, okay? It's amazing. Do I like their sound? No, I don't like their sound, okay? To this point, I still haven't, haven't found one that can go through all it can play certain musics like that. This is what I've found with um, with both Magico and Wilson, and 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 I'm gonna leave Focal out of it because um, I haven't hardly spent any time with them. I just don't really. I, I I don't know if they're capable. I know Wilson, and I know what they're capable of. Wilson and Magico, and they're capable of perfect 
sound, okay? Now, see, this is where it might get confusing for you guys. When I say perfect sound, what I mean is there's nothing that you can say is wrong with the speakers, okay? If you're analyzing the sound, sonically speaking, a Wilson speaker is freaking perfect. A Magico is freaking perfect, okay? But it's annoying to me because that perfection is not natural, okay? It's too perfect. It is too clean. It is too perfect. It is, and, and you can, and you must have proper demo material. Like I went in, I started listening. The demo material the guy played was, I was, I was astounded. I was like, damn, he was picking the right songs, okay? Because I was totally impressed. This is how you sell a rig. You bring somebody in, you go 0 to 120 in 3.1 seconds. It is like the Sonic is perfectly cleaned with acetone. It has zero residue. It is just vapor clean to the point where it's sterile, okay? It's completely sterile. What happens is when I listen to systems like that, I am tripping out on the ear candy. I am not connecting with the music. I can't connect with the music because I'm my my brain is triggered by the ear candy. It is so polished and so resolute and so perfect that it goes into sterile clinical sound for me, which is not natural. That's not how music sounds when I go see a show, and it's not what connects me to the music. I'm not trying to get it exactly like real because nothing um Com nothing compares to real. You can't create real on, on an audio system. But what you can create is connection to the music like you get when you go to a live show. When I go to a live show, it doesn't matter even if the sound is a little off. I'm connecting with the music on a heavy, really intimate level. I'm dancing around. I don't even know what's going on because it's like I'm so immersed in the music. I'm such a part of the music. That's what I seek to create. Now, with these perfect systems using DCS and 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 or 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 MSB even more so, MSB, Boulder, Wilson, I'm going to get something that is so clean and sterile that I'm tripping on the ear candy. All the little droplets and gumballs and little little shiny lights in the sound stage of Sonic attribute, I'm tripping on it because I'm hearing every single thing. And it's not that I'm hearing it, it's that I'm aware of it that bugs me, okay? In my rigs, you still hear all that stuff, but they don't stand out and, and command your attention the way they do in, in a perfectly polished dealer rig or hi-fi rig, okay? So when I say Magico is not to my taste, it's because it is to other people's taste. Some people really like the dealer sound or the hi-fi sound, which is this perfect representation of dynamics and it's overdone it's like seeing it's like if i was put it in the in the terms of a woman um um the magico and all that would be a woman with full makeup full hair done full um just everything like 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 overdone like you're like oh my god she's so gorgeous like ah uh, you know everybody's in awe when they see her but when you live with her it's total high maintenance, and, and I'm not saying the, the, that an audio system would be high maintenance, but it's like she's not what you really signed up for. You 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 were like attracted to the look and, and the whole sheen of it, but then when you really dig in, you're like, wow, she is a real pain. And this is this is I'm I'm just making an example, okay? I'm not trying to say all beautiful women are a pain in the ass, but uh, there's a high maintenance. Hot, you know, type of woman that stands out and you're like, oh, that's the last kind of headache I want, even though she's super gorgeous, okay? And then there's the natural beauty. There's the woman that doesn't need a stitch of makeup and, and she is so naturally beautiful and her personality is so just attractive, you know? And, and so you are brought to her. You're not overpowered by her beauty. It's not coming to you. It's the same with these systems. Magical Wilson, these, these brands with these uh, real resolute MSB DAX and everything, they come to you. They are going to command all the attention in the room. When you sit down, you are not going to be drawn to it. You are going to be smacked over the face with its 
perfect resolution and its perfectness, you know. Um, but in, in that, there is no staying power for me. I need to be somewhat, I, I need to come to the system somewhat and be somewhat romanticized or, or seduced or charmed, okay. That is what I look for because that lasts. It's like the natural beauty, you can marry her and live with her forever and, and there's harmony, okay. The other one, it's out of balance. There's too much physical attraction to that person and it can throw things out of balance. It's the same with hi-fi for me, okay. Um, that's It's too pretty, too shiny. I'm tripping out on the beauty of the sound all the time too much that I don't get the important part, which is connection to the music, okay? So I want to try and make that clear because um, I don't think it's clear for people think, oh, you hate Magico or you hate Wilson or you think, you know, you're, you're cracked because you think they sound like crap and they don't sound like crap. And I've never, ever once said anything sounds like crap. I only talk in the terms of I, I don't like that sound. Or I don't see the value in that piece, that particular product. And let's look at why I don't see the value. Let's see if there's any validity. Let's look inside and we do that whole thing, right? So I just wanted to make that clear because a lot of people like in my videos, they get mistaken. Um, you know, the recent one about the parts, people say, well, you don't think parts make a difference. That's not at all what I freaking said. In fact, quite the opposite. I told you I made a living changing out parts because they do make a difference. And I realized that and I made money doing it, um, changing out parts. I never said parts don't make a difference. I said the point was for people that are trying to assess buying a piece of gear, they're trying to decide what to buy and they look inside and they're trying to assess what to buy based on the brand of components that are inside. You simply cannot do that. Okay. That was my point on that. So as I do this, I'm realizing I really need to explain myself much more in detail about what I mean. And so I thought I would take a second to go over Magico and Wilson and DCS and MSB. And just to say, I have not had an experience where I'm not tripping out on the ear candy um, to the point where I can't connect to the music. Okay. That bothers me. I don't want a system that's completely wowing me all the time so much. Those are good systems for demonstration because people that don't know hi-fi, that don't recognize that as hi-fi sound, they're sold immediately, man. So it's, it's, of course the dealers use that. The dealers use that because those are people that are walking in off the street not that many real steeped audiophiles walk in off the street to a local dealer to go buy stuff. They just don't because that local buyer usually carries the hi-fi sounding stuff because it attracts people. A man and his wife come in. They just got a new house. They want to do an audio system. The guy just got you know a, a raise or he just cashed in his crypto. He wants to go spend a couple hundred G on an audio system. What's going to attract them? That's the zero to 100, the demo system, the hi-fi system, the Wilsons that are just going to be so perfect that they're going to go, oh my God, I've never heard anything sound so clean and so dynamic and so amazing. That sells rigs. So it makes sense why they show that and, and, and because it sells to people that, that just don't aren't steeped in hi-fi. If you've been doing this 30 years and you guys can attest, tell me in the comments below. Back me up, man. You will say, yep, man, I used to be attracted to that when I first started out. And then after 20 some odd years, I got tired of it. And then I started to want to relax in my audio system. And I wanted to just forget I'm listening to an uh, audio system and connect with the music. That's what I build with my rigs. That's what this the equipment that I choose does. Um, and, and so that's my thing about those brands. I don't hate them. It's just not my type of sound. And I'm trying to let people know there's a difference in Sonic. And beware that when you go to, it's like going and seeing the TV with the contrast cranked all the way up. You're gonna, it's, it's eye candy. But then it gives you fatigue after a while. Your eyes get sore. After a while, if you watch that at home, you can't watch a whole movie. That's why they have film mode and you click it to film mode and it dims everything a little bit and gives it a little bit different of film mode because you can watch that for hours. You can't watch the high contrast vibrant mode for hours and hours on end. It, it, it jacks your eyes up. It gives you a headache. It's, it's fatiguing. It's the same with Sonic. So I just wanted to kind of make that um, um, distinction for you guys so you understand where I'm coming from. And so... Um, what can I say? Anyways, thanks for joining.